Hi, I'm Mark with Kimray, where we help energy producers solve their biggest control challenges. Today, we're going to follow the pipes on an oil and gas well site from the wellhead to a gas production unit. Here at this wellhead, gas is being injected into the casing to pressurize the well, which is a process called gas lift. There are certain connections on the side of the tubing that let gas into the tubing, which is atomizing the liquid, which allows that liquid to become lighter and rise to the surface. That fluid and gas in the well is sent over to the gas production unit to be processed. A gas production unit is actually two pieces of equipment joined together inside one housing. On the left, there's a line heater. On the right, there's a separator. Let's see what information we can gain from looking at the coils inside the line heater. The GPU has a coil made up of continuous passes of piping. The tag here tells us it's made up of two and a half inch, 7,700 pound working pressure coils on the preheat side of the choke and three inch, 3,200 pound coils on the expansion side of the choke. These coils are immersed in a water antifreeze solution that acts as a heat transfer media. That solution is heated by a fire tube contained in the heater section of the GPU. All of these components are needed because the pressure of the well bore is higher than that of the pipeline to which the gas is being delivered. When you have a pressure drop, you have a temperature drop as well. With that temperature drop, freezing can occur or hydrates will form and both of those issues can cause problems for the producer. The GPU will preheat the well stream before it comes to the choke, which is where the pressure drop and corresponding temperature drop take place. The well stream is then heated and allowed to expand prior to entering the separator for further processing. We're going to follow this three inch pipe coming out of the expansion loop of the coils. Here's the inlet to this three phase horizontal separator which is a 1,440 pound working pressure vessel, approximately 10 feet long and 36 inches in diameter. There are two types of these vessels, weir and interface. This one is using a weir system. There's an inlet diverter inside and the well stream breaks up as it hits against it. Inside this separator are two baffles. Water goes under the first baffle, flows through the weir nipple to establish a water level through the whole length of the separator. The oil then flows over the top of the first baffle into the oil dump chamber. If this were using an interface system, there's only one baffle involved. The water controller on the right establishes an interface which allows the oil to spill over into the oil chamber. In either system, the water is dumped through this outlet and goes downstream for disposal or storage. Now, let's follow the pipes that carry the oil. This oil goes to a meter which is recording the amount of liquid coming through the dump valve. That pipe continues to an oil storage facility located off-site for processing or sales. The horizontal separator is half full of liquid. This means the top part of the separator will be filled with gas. The gas will go to sales and will also be used to power various instruments controlling this unit. There is a mist extractor inside the vessel located approximately here. The mist extractor extends just below the liquid level. That forces the flow of gas through the extractor. Instrument gas refers to the gas needed to run the controls for the unit. This half inch line goes in and turns up and that's where you'll get the highest, driest gas possible, which is what you want for instrument gas. This gas continues through a preheat line because there will be another pressure drop that could result in freezing. The instrument gas then flows into a first cut regulator. In this instance, cutting the pressure down from 200 pounds down to 70, resulting in a 10 to 12 degree temperature drop before going into the volume pot. The volume pot allows a place for liquids to drop out of the gas as a result of that pressure and temperature drop. If wet gas gets into controls, they can deteriorate quickly. Then we're taking a second pressure cut, this time going from 70 pounds down to 30 pounds. The second cut is for instrument gas for the controllers. As we continue to follow the pipe, we see the emergency shutdown device used to shut down the wellhead in case of an emergency or process failure. 
This system is the burner manifold with two Kimray thermostats and one burner valve. One thermostat is monitoring gas temperature, the other monitors water bath temperature. If the set point of either thermostat is reached, gas going to the burner valve is shut off. The small tubing line coming off the burner valve supplies gas to the standing pilot light located in the flame arrestor. This is a 150 PG pilot set in the indirect mode. As we trace that out, we have a sensing line, supply line, and output. This line goes all the way down to the other end of the gas unit where the sales line is located. There's a pressure to close valve used as a back pressure valve to ensure that we have the necessary pressure to push liquids to their final destinations. After leaving the back pressure valve, the gas continues to a meter run where it is measured and sold. Want to learn more about oil field equipment? Watch the next video in our Oil & Gas 101 series about rod pumps, two-phase vertical separators, and heater treaters.